just yesterday, we got to see the very first JWST images. And let me just say, they were unbelievable. It takes us deeper and gives a clearer view of our neighboring galaxies. The first image from the James Webb Space Telescope. The most complex observatory ever launched. Full color infrared images. The very first image from this miraculous telescope. Because the Hubble images were so amazing, to the untrained eye, it might look like we spent $10 billion to get images that are only a little bit better. So I think I need to provide you with a little bit of context so you can understand why these images are so important. JWST is an infrared space observatory that was launched from French Guiana on Christmas Day last year. But this journey took more than 30 years to become reality. They only thought Hubble would last 15 years. And of course we know now that Hubble has been operating and continues to operate for more than 30 years. But nonetheless, they were worried that they wouldn't have something ready in time in case Hubble failed. As we know, technology evolves and plans change. So we ended up with this beautiful observatory with a 6.5 meter gold lined mirror accompanied by a tennis court sized sun shield. In 2011, US politicians threatened to pull funding, but it was eventually saved in November of 2011. But those people were proved wrong. We launched JWST and it took 30 days to travel 1.5 million kilometers away from the earth to its new home, Lagrange Point 2. L2 is a spot in space where the telescope can hide from the harsh sunlight behind the Earth's shadow to stay cool. But don't worry, it's not lonely out there. We've previously put telescopes like the Herschel Space Telescope and the Planck Space Observatory there too. On this journey, JWST completed a complex set of maneuvers to get ready to be fully deployed. And this left everyone on Earth on the edge of their seats. And then it was done. JWST was fully ready to perform science observations. There are four main objectives for JWST. The first is the early universe, as well as galaxy evolution, birth of stars, and finally exoplanets. These are clearly highlighted in the first image set, so let's break it down. First, we have the JWST deep field image. Now, when you compare this to the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, you might be a little underwhelmed as they look fairly similar. So let me try and explain to you why this image is so much cooler. Because JWST is seeing using infrared light, it is simply able to look back so much further, seeing galaxies that have been redshifted so much that their light becomes invisible to the naked eye. This is the deepest and sharpest infrared image of the distant universe ever taken by humans. I mean, look at the same patch of sky compared to Hubble's image. It is truly unbelievable. What's more is this wasn't even hard for JWST. I mean, to create this image of Hubble's ultra deep field, it took 22 days of exposure time and 50 days of observing time. JWST on the other hand, took this image in just 12.5 hours. And this is just a tiny sliver of sky that we are seeing. If you held a grain of salt in your hand at arm's length, that would be the size of the slice of sky we are observing. Some of the galaxies in this image are over 13 billion years old. So keep in mind, our universe only started 13.8 billion years ago. Using spectroscopy, where they break down the light from individual galaxies into their different wavelengths, they are able to analyze each galaxy to assess how old it is. This galaxy they found to be 13.1 billion years old, and this one 12.8 billion years old. But more than just checking the age of these galaxies, they're able to use the emission and absorption lines in their spectra to analyze their composition. This simply means that they can look at galaxies like this one to see that there is oxygen, hydrogen, and neon present throughout. Although the coolest thing in this image, in my opinion, is the gravitational lensing effect. This is where the extreme mass of the galaxy cluster causes galaxies from behind the cluster to warp and distort into this ring-like structure that you see. This intense gravity can actually cause some super strange but beautiful distortions, and it 
actually helps us to analyze some of the more distant galaxies. Using the same spectroscopy technique that I was talking about before, they were able to analyze these two arcs to determine that they are the same galaxy, just warped so extremely by this gravitational lensing. Einstein predicted this effect, and I can only imagine that he would love to see it today. Up next, we have this beautiful image of Stefan's Quintet. This grouping of five galaxies is visually stunning, but also represents the evolution of galactic structures. When you compare it to Hubble's image of Stefan's Quintet, they both look completely stunning, but there are some key differences that I'd like to highlight. We are able to see such great detail in the individual stars when viewing JWST's image. This is largely due to JWST's ability to peer through stellar clouds and isolate the wavelengths we are really interested in. This is really useful for astronomers who want to witness the merging and interactions between galaxies to study galaxy evolution. It's so rare for us to see in so much detail as galaxies trigger star formations in one another. Using spectroscopic techniques, they're even able to peer deep into the heart of the upmost galaxy, NGC 7319, to observe and analyze the effects of its supermassive black hole. We can see that it's actively pulling in material and putting out light equivalent to 40 billion suns. Up next, and personally my favorite image, is of the Southern Ring Nebula. JWST observed the nebula in mid-infrared wavelengths to gain a new unprecedented view of the dying star and its surrounding gas. We've known for a while now that this dying star is in a binary star system, but until now, we couldn't see the stars themselves. This is where JWST comes in. By peering through the gas, we were finally able to see both stars. The brighter star is actually still fairly early on in its life cycle, but it's stuck in this dance with its dying companion. Even just visually comparing the JWST image to that of Hubble, it's so clear the new level of detail and precision that we have gained. Finally, the beautiful Carina Nebula, often called a stellar nursery. JWST has shown us these beautiful stellar cliffs in what can only be described as a breathtaking image. This showcases Webb's ability to reveal emerging baby stars by peering through the thick clouds of dust and gas. These mountains of gas are roughly seven light years high, and throughout, new stars and planets are being born as we speak. Don't get me wrong, both Hubble and JWST took beautiful images of this amazing nebula. But JWST will simply help us so much more when it comes to looking deep into the heart of these nebula to see the baby stars being born. Last but definitely not least, JWST gave us its very first exoplanet spectra, and it is truly something special. WASP-96b is the planet in question, and it's located over 1,000 light years away, which is fairly distant for an exoplanet. Using JWST's huge mirror, they collected light from a transit of WASP-96b and broke it down into its individual components. Looking at the extremely detailed spikes and drops on the graph, they are able to clearly define what the atmosphere in question is made out of. This clearly shows us that there is a signature of water indicating haze and clouds in the atmosphere of WASP-96b. This is the most detailed transmission spectra of an exoplanet that we've ever captured, and it covers wavelengths from visible red light all the way through to the previously unobtainable wavelengths longer than 1.6 microns. This newfound accuracy will be key in helping us discover the signatures of life like oxygen, methane, and carbon dioxide. We have over 5,000 exoplanets discovered, and JWST is on a mission to discover life elsewhere in the universe. So I hope I've been able to convince you that JWST's images are an important and amazing scientific breakthrough. But what is next for JWST? Because obviously, the science doesn't stop there. And that is the most exciting question to me. So obviously these images are beautiful, but it only covers five days of observations from JWST. The science is truly only just beginning. 
I mean, later this week, we are expected to see the very first images from JWST of our solar system being revealed. I mean, Webb is set to explore the cosmos for 20 years. So in the coming months and even years, we can expect countless discoveries and new questions revealed by Webb that we didn't even know to ask yet as it continues to explore. You can expect the hunt for first light to be a huge priority. We still don't exactly know when the first stars were formed, turning on the lights of the universe. Webb will also continue to look at galaxies and how they change over time, looking at these beautiful galaxies and trying to understand how they got to be so amazing. We'll see Webb continue to search in nebula for baby stars and planetary systems to learn more about their evolution. And finally, we will see JWST do some of the most significant research in exoplanet science ever done. And I can't wait.